Hey, it's Josh Cooper here with CNC Seamless, and today I'm going to walk you through how to transform any image into a DXF file that you can cut with your CNC Seamless Mach 1 or any plasma, laser, or oxygen cutter that accepts DXF files. This is in a direct response to some of our recent videos where we show different outlines being cut with the Mach 1, uh, saying you can create your own state outline, you can take your company logo and mark it out of road plate or steel. Uh, and essentially, I've had a lot of requests from fabricators who want to get more into the details on how do you create specialized DXF files to cut exactly what you want and make the most out of having a Mach 1 machine. So with that, I'm going to walk through some of the software that we suggest that's free. Uh, Inkscape is a perfectly free application that you can download onto pretty much any system that you're running on your computer and use it to do some really fancy and creative things to make the most out of your Mach 1. So uh, go ahead and download Inkscape after you watch this tutorial and you want to get started. So once you get your Inkscape application downloaded, you can go ahead and open it up and you'll get to this blank slate here. We're going to import an image that we want to turn into a DXF file. Uh, we happen to know Metal Metal Anthony out in Montana. So he gave us his logo so we can use this as a complex example to show how you can turn any image into a DXF file that you can cut out then with your plasma table or your Mach 1. So you see there, I imported it. It's a little bit bigger than my canvas, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab the corner, and when I click Shift, it's gonna let me, or Control, rather, it's gonna let me scale it properly so I can get this down to about the right size of my worksheet and give me a nice area to start playing with. So just by dragging these corners here. I'm just gonna place it down right there on the, on the sheet. Once I have it scaled down, I'm gonna go ahead and click Path. I'll go to Trace Bitmap here. And you'll see there's gonna be a window that pops up that shows all the different things that you're gonna expect when you're turning this image into a flat black and white logo, which is essentially what a DXF is, it's just simple lines and paths and shapes. So I'm going to show here with this brightness cutoff mode at the top that I can transform this multicolor image into a bunch of different uh, alterations based on where that brightness cutoff is. So whether I wanna get the greens and the, the reds, the grays. Uh, for this, we're just really gonna care about the outline of the logo so I'm actually gonna turn up this brightness cutoff quite a bit and just to get this quick example here I'm gonna go ahead and click apply and you can see here I've now got an outline of the Melton Metal Anthony logo that I can now drag along independently of that logo itself so from here I don't really need this original image anymore so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it and what I'm left with is a silhouette essentially of the logo and when I click in here, it's gonna give me a few different options for selecting and moving around these nodes. So something to keep in mind is when you're cutting with a plasma cutter or OxyFuel, uh, it depends on what cutter you have installed as to what precision you can get. Um, for this, we're actually going to be putting the logo inside of a Montana State outline. So I really don't need to have all of these little paths here in the center. I'm actually just going to import the outline silhouette so that it all drops out in one drop. And for that, I'm just gonna click in, double click into that layer there. I'm gonna select these nodes just by clicking and dragging. And I'll go ahead and delete those. And again, similarly, you can control and click to grab whichever nodes you like, or you can alt click. And as you're holding alt and click, you can actually get this red lasso, which you have to close up and it'll let you select very specific points here. So as I'm doing this, selecting out the points, and what I'm left with is a nice clean silhouette that now I can click file, save as, we'll make it a DXF. So scroll down here, just like we say, we import files as DXF files. That's the standard for CNC, plasma tables, and Oxfield table importing. And when I click that option, I can go ahead and save it as metal and metal Anthony logo and I'll go ahead and just save it to my downloads folder here. So when you click save as a DXF, you'll get this pop-up window that gives you a bunch of options that you can go through to create different ways that it outputs the lines in your DXF. Uh, we don't typically click any of these because it's just more complexity and a lot more settings that get kind of confusing. We're just going to select the box that says use the document unit as the base unit, which means it's going to scale this file down as if it's on a piece of paper. So an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Um, you can guess that this will be about four or five inches wide, and that's about right for scaling to the Mach 1 so we can then mess with it later when we actually import it. So I'll click OK here. It's going to export that file, and I'm gonna go ahead and 
grab it here from my downloads folder and I'll copy it over to my flash drive that's plugged into my machine. So you can see here, I'm just going to go ahead and copy the MMA logo. And I've already got a couple of different files in here, including a Montana outline, which is going to help us make our full final shape with the Mach 1. So uh, I'm going to close this out. I'm going to eject my USB drive and I'm going to go walk over and plug this in to my Mach 1 machine. You can see here there's just a slot that I plug the USB-C into. Once that's in there, I can now go back to my computer and essentially you'd be operating your Mach 1 with a tablet. Uh, there are options to operate it with the desktop. So um, for here, I'll just be showing it on my screen here. So now that I have the CNC with software here loaded up, I'm going to go ahead and step through the four steps so we can actually make this cut out of a marker right now since we're not going to go outside and cut it. We want to make sure that it's actually loading in properly while we're inside uh, just to test it out. So first step, I'm going to click design. I'm going to go to the files, load from the flash drive that I just plugged in and go down and select the MMA logo here. And I'll load it at about, let's say, 100 85% since we loaded it initially from the Inkscape at about um, five, six inches. So you can see here it loaded into the design screen and this is about what we'd expect for the size of this as we loaded in from Inkscape uh, and scaled it up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add on this Montana outline that I have also saved to the flash drive on top of it. So you can load multiple DXFs into the Mach 1 interface and then kind of touch and drag and move them around where you want them to be in real space. Um, so this is not meant for super precision design and dimensioning. Uh, this is for primarily converting images and logos in. Uh, and we'll go through how to actually dimension these to make them very specific using Fusion 360 uh, as a much more powerful CAD software tool. Um, also good for making dimensional parts and uh, pieces later. So um, for now, we're just going to focus on basic steps and how we converted this image into a cuttable file. Um, so. First things first, you can see here both of these outlines are shaded yellow. That means that they're both going to be cut on the inside and then leading out uh, with the torch. So that means it's going to come in and first cut on the inside of this piece. The metal part will drop out of the material. Um, and we actually want this Montana outline to be cut from the outside. So what you're left with is that beautiful state outline and not have a, a pierced point in the middle of it. So you can see there, I can just click into the outline, select the side. You can even ask, what does this even mean? And it'll explain to you what side you're selecting. Um, tell it that we want this to lead in from the outside and click done. Now that it's not shaded, we know that this is correct. And we have it scaled properly. So this is gonna fit all onto the template material that we have laying out behind me. So uh, that's the first step was design. So of course you can move these around if you want. You can scale them, rotate them. Um, we have it in a good spot for now and what I want to focus on here is the origin point in this design screen. So essentially where this red axis and this green axis meets is what we're going to use to indicate to the machine where are we actually going to cut this design in space. So as I jump into the place section here, I've got my design loaded up and you can see here wherever that torch is when I click this home button is where it's going to place the design down in space. So let's say I want to move this design. I'm moving that origin point with respect to the arms and where the machine is in real life. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and move that to about the bottom left corner of my material there. And when I get it to about the right spot, I'll go ahead and click confirm right here. So that'll actually set the origin down. So when I go and move my arms to make sure that they're actually going to fit on my material, uh, that design is now locked in place. So you can go back and check with the reference point. And as you can see there, we're getting pretty close, uh, but I think it'll be pretty good on the material. And I'll just check to make sure. So, um, so that looks pretty good. And now I'm going to select my material settings. So for this, it doesn't matter too much uh, what material because we're not actually cutting, but in real life, you would say what thickness you're cutting. Uh, what plasma cutter you have connected to the machine and that will set all of your speeds and feeds to make sure it runs at the right feed rate. So I click confirm there and then I can go to run. It's going to load up all the g-code and the cut parameters. So when I click start the torch is going to 
lift up and it's gonna go to that first pierce point. So I'll turn around behind me and wait for that torch to hit the material. Um, if you're actually cutting this with a plasma cutter, it would do this process automatically with ohmic probing. But since of course a marker doesn't have any kind of electrical contact, you can't really do that. So I'll lower it down a little bit more and I'll go ahead and click pierce. And that's gonna start drawing out my marker. All right. So of course I can, while I'm watching this cut in real life, this would be you know using a plasma cutter so I can monitor uh, the speed and the feed, the height with the arc voltage and make sure that the plasma cutter is actually doing what I want it to during that cut. Um, could also pause the cut and rewind if we wanted to. Uh, if the torch outran itself or there was a problem with your gas bottle supply or uh, your plasma cutter compressed air. So a lot of control you can get out of this Mach 1 machine. Um, but as you can see, very simple to load in a complicated DXF file um, and make it cut in no time flat with the plasma cutting attachment. So we'll go ahead and let this guy finish up. And once we get to that next Montana State outline, um, it'll basically lead in from the outside. So we'll show you what that looks like in a second. The difference is going to be where the pierces are and the lead ins and lead outs are. So uh, with the Melton Metal Anthony logo, you can see there's a, a little dot kind of in the bottom located around here. And that's where it's actually leading in from that inside cut. Uh, whereas on the Montana State outline, there's going to be a lead out so that you're actually left with the outside outline, which is what you would want if you're cutting this out of metal. All right, just like that. So now that the cut is complete, I'll go ahead and move this torch out of the way. And you can see there, what we're left with is a beautiful Metal Metal Anthony logo out of a Montana State outline. So uh, kind of a niche request. There's of course all sorts of different things you can apply this technique to to make your company logo, uh, images, basically any CAD file that you would want to turn into a DXF, you can do so. Uh, with Inkscape and the Mach 1. So, so thanks for watching. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cut this out of metal for real and send it over to Anthony. Uh, in the meantime, if you have any questions on how you can turn your company logo or uh, another image that you're creating with the Mach 1 or any other kind of plasma or laser cutting table, let us know and we'll walk you through some of the quick steps that we've come to find as we've been doing this a lot for ourselves and for doing demonstrations. So uh, thank you very much and stay tuned for that short on cutting this out with real metal.